The topics of the multiplication principle and tree diagrams and permutations and combinations are extremely important, and they've been the subject of the last two videos. We'll use, in this video, we'll uh, use this opportunity to look at some more examples that involve those same concepts and try to make them sink in a little better. So we won't really be introducing any new concepts in this video, but we'll hope to get a better conceptual understanding of these important ones that we've been working on recently. Carol lives in California. She has five aunts who live in Asheville, Winston-Salem, Charlotte, Chicago, and Philadelphia. She plans to visit all of them. In how many ways can she decide on the order in which she visits her aunts? First off, with no restrictions. So a sample trip, for example, would be a trip to visit the aunt in Winston-Salem, followed by a trip to Asheville, Chicago, Philadelphia, and Charlotte. If there are no restrictions, then since we have five aunts living in five different cities, it's simply a question of how many different ways can we arrange those cities in a specified order to determine the order of the visits. Five cities means we're looking at five factorial, counting the permutations of five objects. Five factorial is 120, so there would be 120 ways to arrange the visits. Now, in the second variation on this question, Carol has decided she's going to visit the ant in Chicago first, and the ant in Asheville last. So the question is, how many ways can she arrange her itinerary if she's going to go to Chicago first and Asheville last? In that case, her question is simply how many ways to arrange the other three cities in the number two, three, and four slots. So she's taking those three cities and arranging them in some order in slots two, three, and four. That's arranging three objects in order, accounting the permutations of three objects. Three factorial is six. Now a third variation of the question, for purposes of economy, She's decided that she wants to visit all the ants in North Carolina during a single trip to North Carolina. The North Carolina cities are Asheville, Winston-Salem, and Charlotte. So she wants to plan her itinerary in such a way that while she's in North Carolina, she does all three of those visits so she doesn't have to come to North Carolina more than the one time. How can we count her number of possible different itineraries subject to the restriction that she makes only one trip to North Carolina. Sometimes when approaching a more complicated problem it's good to simplify it a bit and try to solve a simplified version of it first. So let's for starters here think about counting the ways she could plan her itinerary if she's going to hit North Carolina first. If she's going to do North Carolina first, then that means the first three stops will be in North Carolina, and then Chicago and um, Philadelphia will be the final two. So she would be arranging the three North Carolina cities in the first three spots. That can be done in three factorial ways. And she would be arranging Chicago and Philadelphia in the last two spots. That can be done in two factorial ways. Three factorial times two factorial is 12. So that would be 12 different ways she could plan her trip if she did the North Carolina cities first. That's not the answer to the question, but we're getting there. Because now, to finish, the only additional thing we have to consider is the fact that, well, the North Carolina cities don't have to be these three spots. They could be the three middle spots, or they could be the final three spots. Each of those possibilities would give us 12 additional ways of planning her itinerary. 
So we would have the 12, three we've, the 12 ways we've already counted, plus 12 more ways with the North Carolina cities in the middle, and then 12 more ways with the North Carolina cities last. And that would give us a total of 36 variations, uh, 36 itineraries, where the North Carolina cities would all be visited together. How many possibilities are there for a person's initials if the first, middle, and last name all start with a letter from the set S described here? For example, the, initial, the person's initials might be D, C, D, all those letters coming from the set S. Well, the first initial could be any one of the six letters. The middle initial could be any one of the six letters. The, the last name could start with any of the six letters. Six possibilities for first name initial, six for middle name, six for last, six times six times six is 216. How many possibilities are there if each initial comes from the set S and the three names start with three different letters? Well, in that case, the first name could begin with any of the six. The middle name could begin with any of the five remaining letters in the set after the first one was chosen. And the last name could begin with any of the four letters that were not used by the first name or middle name. Six times five times four, 120. Do you see that this is in effect a permutations question uh, permutations of six objects choosing three. We're choosing three different letters from among the six and arranging them as the person's initials. How many possibilities are there in which one of the initials is A and the other two initials are two different letters? That is different from A and different from each other. So in this example, one of the initials is A and the other two initials are both different from A and different from each other. I think probably the easiest way to think through this is to think of, uh, first, how, how many options are there for where the A goes? The A has to be one of the initials, so it can be the first initial, the middle initial, or the last initial three possibilities for which position the A occupies and then wherever you put the A that will leave two blank spots for other letters, uh, five choices for which goes in the first one of those blank spots and then four remaining choices for what letter goes in the other uh, blank spots. So three, three choices for where to put the A times five choices for filling in the first of the two blank spots and four for filling in the other. A total of 60 possibilities. How many possibilities if the letters are all different and in alphabetical order? Like, for example, A, C, D. Another example would be B, D, E. The three letters are all different and they appear in alphabetical order. Oddly enough, there's a way of looking at this problem which turns it into a combinations problem. Now that may seem at first counterintuitive to you because normally combinations arise when we're not talking about order and here we are talking about order. So how can we view this as a combinations problem? First, convince yourself, convince yourself that these 20 cases are in fact the 20 things we're trying to count. If you take these six letters and look at all the possibilities for choosing three of these letters and putting them in alphabetical order, convince yourself that this is all the cases that there are. One way to think about what you're doing here is for any three letters that you pick from this set, for any three different letters you pick, how many ways can you put those three letters into alphabetical order? Only one, right? For example, if I picked the letters B, E, and F, 
those three letters, B, E, and F, can be put into alphabetical order, order only if I write them B, E, F. Any other ordering of them would not be in alphabetical order. So for any three elements chosen from this set, there's, only, there's exactly one way of putting them in alphabetical order. And that means the number of possibilities we're counting here for three letters in alphabetical order is logically equivalent to simply counting the number of ways to choose three of these six letters. Because once I have the three letters, I know there's exactly one way to put them into alphabetical order. So if I just count the number of ways of choosing three of the six letters, which is what this combinations expression does, then that will give me what I'm looking for. And the combinations formula here does give you 20. So again, this, this, this seems a little strange at first because I'm using the combinations formula to do this problem even though order is involved. But the reason that it's valid in this case is simply because the number of ways of putting three letters in alphabetical order is, is only one. So it really just boils down in this case to the number of different ways I can choose three letters from the set of six. Four boys and four girls are participating in a three-legged race. How many ways are there for the children to pair off if each boy pairs off with a girl? So we want to pair off these four boys with the four girls. Permutations or combinations? Think about making a list like this. Here's the four boys. In each of these blanks, we want to put the name of a girl who will be paired with the boy whose name is beside her. Logically, that's equivalent to simply taking these four names and putting them into an ordered list. That's a permutations question. How many different permutations are there for these four names? How many ordered arrangements? How many different ways could they be put into a list? Four factorial or 24? So this is a pure permutations question. Now we're going to change the rules and say how many ways are there for the children to pair off if the boys pair off with boys and the girls pair off with girls. So we've got these four boys. Each boy will be tied to a boy. We've got four girls. Each girl will be tied to a girl. How many ways of doing the pairings? Well, let's first think through the boys. The four boys can pair off in three ways. And we see those three ways pictured right here. Let's give them names. Let's say the boys are named John, Ed, Mike, and Charles. We can tie Ed and Mike together, which then of, means, of course means we have to pair up John and Charles. Or we can pair up Ed with John, which then means we have to pair up Mike with Charles. Or we can pair up Ed with Charles, which means we have to pair up John and Mike. If you think about it, what it boils down to is once we've decided who to match up with Ed, then that automatically determines the rest, doesn't it? Because once we know who we're going to pair with Ed, then the other two automatically have to be paired together. There are only three choices for who we pair with Ed because there are only three other boys besides Ed. So that means, in effect, there's only three ways that we can uh, come up with when it comes to pairing the boys. And similarly with the girls. There are four girls, so it's going to be a completely analogous argument in, in determining how many ways to pair up the girls. So we wind up with three different ways to pair up the boys, three different ways to pair up the girls with the girls. Pairing up the boys is three, can be done in three ways, times the number of ways we can pair up the girls. Three times three is nine. Nine different ways to construct all the pairings if we're going to pair up boys with boys and girls with girls. How many different arrangements can be made of the letters and the word tenderness? Here's one example. We're taking the letters from the word tenderness and simply writing them in a different order or writing them in some particular order. Now, at first glance, you might say, okay, tenderness has how many letters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
So isn't this just a matter of taking 10 objects and counting the number of ways to arrange them in a row, which would be 10 factorial? The answer is no, and the reason is because some of the letters are identical to others. These two S's, for example, if we, if we swap these two S's, you can't see any difference, can you? Or if we take the two N's and, put, and swap the two N's, we can't see any difference. So the question really here is a little more subtle than that. It's asking how many visibly different arrangements of the letters are there, uh, given the fact that some of the letters are repeated. Certainly, if we had 10 different letters here, then the answer would be 10 factorial. But we don't have 10 different letters. Let's think of it as a fill-in-the-blank question. We have 10 letters. We're going to fill in the 10 blanks with the 10 letters, and we want to count the number of ways of doing it that gives us uh, visibly different outcomes. Let's start by making a list of the letters that we have and how many copies we have of each letter. We have one T, we have three E's in tenderness. One, two, three. We have two N's, one D, one R, and two S's. Now it doesn't matter what order we proceed in, let's just proceed uh, top down. If we think about first placing the T somewhere, we have ten empty blanks, so we could put that T in any one of the 10 spots. Choose one of the 10 spots, combinations of 10 things, choosing one. Choose one of the 10 spots for the T. Now let's place the E's. We have three E's, and after we position the T, we have nine blank spots left. Choose three of those nine spots as the places where the E's go. After we've done that, we'll still have six empty blanks, Let's put the two ends in two of those six remaining spots. We'll then have four remaining blank spots. Let's put the D in one of those, and then put the R in one of the remaining three spots, and then the two S's will have to occupy the two final spots that are left. All we need to do is just count the number of ways of doing each of these steps. The T can be placed in C of 10 one ways, then we have to multiply times the number of ways of placing the E's, times the number of ways of placing the N's, and so forth. If you carry out all the multiplication here, you come out with the correct answer of 151,200.